Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things up your good friend Bradley. And today is a pleasantish Sunday type video on YouTube for you. And for the first 30 seconds or so, we are going to start out very family friendly with a reading from Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Enjoy. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Chapter 1. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. However little known the feelings or views of such a man may be on his first entering a neighborhood, this truth is so well fixed in the minds of the surrounding families that he is considered as the rightful property of some one or other of their daughters. My dear Mr. Bennet, said his lady to him one day, have you heard that Netherfield Park is let at last? Mr. Bennet replied that he had not. But it is, returned she, for Mrs. Long has just been here, and she told me all about it. Mr. Bennet made no answer. Do not... Okay, I think they're gone. I think it's safe for me to tell you that on this Sunday video, enjoying a little bit of Dunhill Elizabethan in a brand new Costello. Oh my God. This was sent to me by our very good friend, Adam. Adam is one of my $25 Patreons, Patreon supporters. He's on the list. Adam Loveless. He's going to be shouted out later on in this episode. He sent me this pipe along with another cool thing. And I'm going to show you that in a video that posts on Wednesday. But this is a beautiful, brand new Costello. It's in a Sea Rock finish, but it's kind of a different Sea Rock finish that I'm used to. It's a beautiful bent billiard. I absolutely love it. And I can't believe that I now have three Costellos. Look at this. Look at my babies. Three Costellos. All lined up for you. And all of them, well, two of them were gifts. This one I purchased myself, but this one was from our good friend Gus. And this one was from our good friend Adam. I am so lucky. You guys are amazing. Um, I will talk about this at great length in the video that's going to post Wednesday. But speaking of luck, speaking of good things, that's great. That's fantastic. And there are a lot of good things to celebrate on the channel. There are some other things that cause me great annoyance and cause me to have to get angry and rant. And I'm going to talk about one of those things right now. You may notice as I post more videos that things, things change, things morph a little bit because I'm going to be trying to experiment in how to, I'm going to be conducting some experiments in how to avoid demonetization. Because recently, uh, a couple days ago, I woke up, boop -a -doop -a -doo, got on the computer, was gonna look through some emails, look through some comments and things like that got on the channel page for Stuff and Things, and I believe 48 of my videos had been demonetized um, with no warning, no indication as to why. And so I started looking through them, started trying to figure out what was going on. Is there a common thread? Is there a common thing with the title or the thumbnail or the tags or the actual content of the videos? I don't really swear on this channel. I do sometimes on the Stuff and Things plays, but they're always fine. They never get demonetized. Um, I don't talk about anything super controversial. I don't talk about, you know, tragedies or news or anything like that. These are all things that are in the community guidelines or the monetization guidelines for YouTube. Um, I don't use illegal drugs. I don't do anything that is like harmful to others, no hate speech. And I have videos that have the exact same content, basically, as videos that were demonetized, but they're fine. And so there's no rhyme or reason. I can't figure out what's going on. There are a lot of people who say, um, I posted something on Twitter talking about this, and there are a lot of people who said, oh, well, it's the FDA and FTC trying to crack down and pressuring YouTube to crack down on anything that is T-O-B-O-T-O-B-A-C-C-O related. Um, the T word, the dreaded T word. Apparently, 
there's some evidence that maybe that's going on, that in over all social media, there are some special interest groups who are pressuring Twitter, um, Facebook, YouTube, all the social media outlets out there. They're trying to pressure them to get rid of all capital T related content. I don't know if that's actually the case or not. Um, I do know that I got hit with massive demonetization. And I want to say that whenever I bring something up like this, there have been videos in the past where I've talked about my trials and travails with demonetization. There's always someone who has to say, uh, you know, screw you, you're greedy. What do you care? Shouldn't you just be doing these videos from the kindness of your heart? And okay, that's fine. But I have over 30,000 subscribers and I built this channel over years and years and years. And I like getting some revenue from it. It helps. Um, Obviously, you guys are really generous and you send me some things that I can review sometimes, a lot of the times, but I also spend a good amount of my own money trying to find products that I wouldn't normally purchase that I can review. I wouldn't get them normally, but I get them so I can review them. Um, and it's nice to have some supplementary income and it's also nice to see that a lot of the work that I put into the channel or the channels, but it's pretty much just stuff and things, not stuff and things plays that's being affected. Um, can pay off monetarily. And it's just kind of a gut punch to see that something you've been building over, God, has it been five years now? Something like that. Suddenly, literally 50% of the revenue that you were garnering from it disappears overnight. It's just freaky. And uh, it shows how YouTube is changing. It shows that it's going from something that was very creator-driven, um, kind of, it had kind of an indie spirit to it, is becoming very corporate and very safe and very homogenized. And I'm gonna keep with it, I'm gonna keep making videos, but I'm gonna do some experimentation. Uh, first 30 seconds stuff. Am I saying anything in the first 30 seconds that the algorithm might pick up on? I'm gonna try different things to see what's going on. I might avoid saying the dreaded T word. Maybe that has something to do with it. I think they even look at comments too. So I know that some people will see this as selling out or something, but I still want to bring you the content that I've been bringing you. And I just want to try different things to see what can be monetized and what won't be monetized. And we'll see. We're going to play around with it a little bit. Um, I think that... Well, no, I can't even say that. I was going to say that it seems like a lot of my actual T reviews are being demonetized, but they're, it's about 50-50. Some are, some aren't. So that's what makes it so difficult to figure out exactly what's going on. I actually spent hours and hours going through all the dif different videos that have been demonetized. And in the past, usually if a video got demonetized, I would submit it for manual review and then it would come back and be re-monetized usually after most of my views had already happened, so I wouldn't be getting much money out of it, but at least any residual views that happened over the years would still be monetized. Now I submitted like whatever it was, 47, 48 videos for review. Almost all of them came back as confirmed by manual review to be unsuitable for most advertisers. Um, some came back and were fine. The video the uh, the censored I own and why they, uh, why I own them, the video about firearms, that came back and was confirmed to be okay. I don't know. I don't know what's what. I don't know what to make of any of this, but I just wanted to let you know that in case there are some changes, in case things are different, it's me trying to experiment to see what's going on. And I'm gonna keep trying to bring you the same sort of content. Um, and we'll see. So a nice reading from Jane Austen at the top of the show. We'll see if that makes any difference. Um, we might avoid the dreaded T word. We'll see about that. I was even thinking, and this is something I've been thinking of for actually a long time, um, and it actually, I, was, I started thinking about this not because of demonetization, but Sunday Smoke as a name. A lot of people started abbreviating it as SS, and that has some rather bad historical connotations, SS. And so there's, for a while now, I've been thinking of rebranding this video, this Sunday video as Sunday Stuff and Things. So that could be SSAT. Um, I'm thinking about that. That might be something I do, but we'll see. I'm gonna keep you guys posted and uh, we're, just, we're gonna keep cranking out videos at the normal pace and they will be about the same things as always. And I'm just gonna see how I can finagle the system and maybe 
you know, pull one over on old YouTube if they seem to be completely opposed to anything tea related on their channel. We're going to see if we can get it past them. Um, also, we were talking about t-shirts and it was funny. This, this put me in mind of a good t-shirt idea, which is kind of on the nose, I'll admit. But what do you think about this? So that's basically the little dialogue you get from YouTube on your video page, your video manager page, when you're, a particular video of yours has been deemed unsuitable for advertisers. I got, the, I got the YouTube font Roboto, I think it's called, and I made that up. I don't know. We'll see. If you like that, maybe we'll make that t-shirt. I think it's kind of funny. But I'm still looking at other designs and trying to figure some things out, so I will keep you guys abreast of that and keep you posted. Um, we're going to switch gears a little bit here. I'm going to, I'm going to relight my P. I'm going to relight the T in my P and S it. And we'll be right back with another subject. All right, we are back and I'm going to give you a little update on the homeless situation. A lot of people have asked me to expound on that. I mentioned it briefly last week. Um, even though, as I've been looking into this more, statistically, supposedly, the rates of homelessness have been going down around here, it's been very, very bad in my neighborhood where I live. And recently there have been a lot more incidences of people on the property doing nasty things. Um, I don't know if I told you about the man who was sleeping in front of my doorway and I tried to leave the building and wasn't able to because his body was there. And then when I cracked the door open and told him he needed to move himself from out of the doorway, he proceeded to try to attack me and I had to like hold the door closed as he was like, Bleh. Recently, there has been a man who seems to love being in my dumpster. Um, and again, like there's part of me that's just like, okay, that's kind of amusing. I mean, it's not funny when people are in such dire straits that that's what they're doing. They're rooting around in dumpsters. Obviously, I have sympathy for these people, but when you're confronted with it all the time where you live, it can start to wear on you a little bit. And I had a particular day. It was the day that I noticed all the demonetization going on, and then there was so much noise going on from the shelter across the street, and just so much there's so much hate and negativity in the air all the time of just people like, you mother, mother, blah, 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 blah. You just hear it constantly, just hateful, hateful things. And it just starts to wear on you. And so in the morning I was going out to work and I was gonna throw something in the dumpster and there was a man in the dumpster, a man with a swastika tattooed on his forehead, was in my dumpster with a giant stick. I told him, you need to get out of the dumpster don't be in our dumpster. There are single women who live here who don't want to be confronted by a crazy Charles Manson looking weirdo with a swastika on his forehead in our dumpster. He started freaking out, going crazy. I called the police. He ran away, went to work, came back from work. He was in the dumpster again. And I, uh, I have to admit, I got a little rude with him. I walked up to the dumpster and I kicked it as hard as I could. He went, Ray! and I told him to get the F out of the dumpster. Then I called our property management company, or I called the family that owns our property, told them about it. They have cameras in the back. They said, oh, we're so sorry, we're so sorry. You know, we'll send somebody. I'm like, well, he's gone now. I already dealt with it. Um, and then I went back inside, came back outside again, because I wanted to see if he was back in the dumpster again. And in our back, like, grassy area, there were four homeless people having a chat. And it was some of the most hateful things I had ever heard. The N-word was just being bandied about and like horribly racist things. And I said, I don't want to have to put up with that. When I come out into my area, place where I pay rent, I don't want to have to put up with that. So I walked back and said, hey, do you live here? They said, hey, this is a park, you effer. And not, not F-U-C-K, but F-A-G-G, -G, or F, you know, the, the homosexual slur. Um, I said, it is not a park, I'm going to call the police, then was just hurling abuse at me as I was on the phone with the police. The police actually came and made them leave, uh, very aggressively made them leave, but ugh, it's just been getting ridiculous, and it's interesting, I noticed they put signs up around the neighborhood now that say, Crime Watch. These premises are, are being recorded by closed-circuit TV and reviewed by law enforcement. 
I don't know. It seems like maybe the city is trying to make some sort of effort to clean things up around here. I have noticed that police are coming by at night and making people stop camping on the sidewalk. That's great. Thank you for that. Um, but we'll see. I'll keep you posted. It was just one of those days where I was so fed up. I was fed up with the YouTube stuff. I was fed up with just homeless people being underfoot in my backyard all the time that I kind of snapped a little bit. I got kind of angry. But if they're causing a problem, if people are just like sleeping in the backyard, I don't necessarily do anything. But I kind of think maybe I should every single time now call the police every single time. And that's what the police said too. They said call every time. And uh, maybe I will. But you guys want an update, so I thought I would uh, give you a little update. We have a lot of questions for Ask Stuff and Things, so I think I want to take another little break. And now that I've talked about homelessness, now that's probably going to be something that's flagged by YouTube and it'll be demonetized too. So who knows? I don't know. But we're going to take a break and we will return with hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. All right, we're back and it is time for hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. Remember, if you have a question and you would like it answered on the show, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to answer. Also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can ask me questions there. Um, and with all the demonetization going on, if you want to support the show, Patreon is definitely a good way to do it. There is a link in the description box below, and we really appreciate it. Um, first question comes via Patreon from Dane Burchett. He says... I don't really watch many Let's Play videos, but decided to check out what you have going on at SAT Plays. I really enjoyed your Doki Doki Literature Club series since you followed a different story path than my own play. You mentioned that you would have continued the story even if it hadn't gone off the rails with the big horror plot twist. Have you considered playing any other visual novels? I don't know that they would make for good YouTube content, but there are a lot of really engaging stories to be found. Muv, Love, Alternative, and Steinsgate being two of the more popular titles. Uh, thanks, Dane, and thanks for watching SAT Plays. The Doki Doki Literature Club series was quite odd and quite interesting. I had fun with that. Um, maybe. I kind of prefer games on that channel that actually have gameplay um, and aren't just visual novels, but Steins Gate is an interesting suggestion. That's a, I actually watched the anime of that and enjoyed that quite a bit, so I don't know if I would play the game because I'm assuming it's very similar to the anime, but I'll keep that in mind. There are lots of like crazy risque Japanese visual novels I know on Steam and things like that, but I don't know if we'll delve into those. Um, next from Twitter, we have a question from APAC, at APAC77093359. APAC says, Hi, Baratha Lee. Have you made a video about cellaring? I am curious as to how many tins people keep of their favorites. Cheers. Um, I have touched on it before, and like I have said many times, I don't really have a cellar of tea. I don't keep tins of tea in my cellar because I don't really have the room for it, for one. And number two, I'm typically just going through blends that I'm reviewing. So I have my staples right now. I mean, it used to be Elizabethan was kind of my staple every day with like standard mixture and a couple other ones thrown in there every once in a while. And then this ever-rotating... Uh, tin of something that I'm reviewing on any given time. And so I don't really buy a bunch and put it away. I do have a fair amount of Elizabethan tins ferreted away and some other things as well. I have some esoterica blends and stuff put away, but not much. Next, we have a question from Drew Franz, at Drew Franz, at SAT Bradley. Can you explain the basics of tamping your tobacco? How often during a smoking session do you do you? How hard, soft should you be tamping? We see you tamping while lighting a bowl or relighting, but how often is too often? Um, I guess I've never really thought about that. You just tamp when you need to, kind of. Um, it's about feeling the draw, feeling how restricted or unrestricted the draw is, and tamping also helps keep the little burning disc of ash at the top in contact with the unburnt tea in the bowl. So as you are enjoying your pipe, if you notice that the draw is becoming a little too unrestricted, a little too open, um, and if it's not burning as well, you'll tamp it down. There's not really any formula for how often you do it. It's all just kind of the feel and how well uh, your pipe is smoking. So I hope that helps. Next, we have a question from at John 3088406665. John says, 
are component T's listed on a tin according to the proportions of each? No, I don't think so. Um, I think that a lot of the times, if you have a blend that is primarily a Virginia blend, they will list Virginia first, but I don't think there are any hard and fast rules. I don't think maybe certain manufacturers have kind of a, a tendency to do certain things, but as far as I know, um, they will just kind of list the, list the components in whatever order they want. That might make it easier for us if they did that, but I don't know that they do. Next, we have a question from Zach at A Great White Bart. He says, have you ever desired to buy a house with a yard and deck, something with some land, maybe do some gardening? Or do you think you're more content in an apartment type of housing? Either way, love the channel, keep up the greatness. Zach, um, well, you've heard about some of the trials and tribulations of the current apartment that I live in, but we'll see. Um, I would like to get a house at some point, maybe, but the mean home price in Bellingham, Washington right now is around $400,000. Um, for a tiny, tiny little thing. And it's not much better in the surrounding county areas. The housing prices around here are ridiculous. So we'll see, um, especially with YouTube demonetization, I don't know that I'm gonna be affording a house in this area anytime soon, but maybe, maybe I'll rent a house or something. I would love to have a dog, that would be great. Uh, next, we have a question from Matt Jones at MC Jones QWE. Matt says, I noticed you usually buy the two ounce tins of Stratford. Why not grab the eight ounce tubs and save a little money? Hashtag ask stuff and things. Well, because I typically like to have um, the tins because that is a nice contained thing of tea. I can open it and then by the time I'm done with it, it probably hasn't dried out too much yet. If I had a big eight ounce tin, I would open it and then I would have to decant it all into individual jars or one big jar to keep it from drying out a lot. And because I'm often trying different blends to review, um, I wanna have something that is just sort of self-contained. And you do save money on the eight ounce tins, but for the most part, I like having the two ounce tins. Um, we have a question from John Anderson at Boston EO. Boston EO. We've had many questions from John, and I always stumble over his Twitter name. Uh, John says, <clears throat> I got on a YouTube autoplay binge of your pipe vids, and I noticed you have at least three different color blankets as backdrops. Brown is the best. You say that very objectively. Or you say that very objectively? Very, uh, uh, like that's the final word? I don't know that brown's the best. I'm not sure. How did you come to pick blue, the current black drop, black, black drop, back drop, and do you plan to fix the sagging bits? <laughs> Hashtag blanket gate. The, the sagging bits are there for effect, to make a nice like drapery look in the background. Uh, somebody made fun horribly of the, the blue blanket in the back, and they were like, ugh, is that, did your mom buy you that? And actually my mom did buy it for me and I appreciate it very much. Um, I have experimented with different backdrops. I picked blue because it was something that I can color key out easily if I'm doing YouTube thumbnails. Um, the brown one is not easy to color key, especially because I have brown hair and a brown beard and stuff like that. So, or chroma key. So that's why it's blue. I was actually recently trying to find, I would love to have um, just like a nice neutral muslin background or something that I could use, but I don't know. I like the blue background. I think it's fine. Uh, this is from Tyler at Tyler Brew Baker 20. Tyler says, <clears throat> Hey, I hope all is well. I know that in a past video you said that your dad had a pipe and was wondering what blend did he smoke? Um, I don't know. I'm assuming that he probably used some sort of aromatic blend from whatever shop he got his pipe from. He wasn't ever like super into it. I remember there was a bag, like an old leather pouch that had some tea in it. And I don't remember what it smelled like. I think maybe a vanilla-y kind of thing. Maybe it was even Captain Black, I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure it was an aromatic. Um, and I think we are back or down to our very last question here. This is from Eric Furman, at Eric Furman. Eric says, I am interested in your Dunhill billiard pipes. Could you please explain the difference in the various numbers, sizes, and types, and how you determine the age of Dunhills? 
Well, that would be a very long subject um, that I wouldn't really be able to get into. It depends on when they were made. There are number codes for Dunhills, but it depends on when they were made. Um, I can't remember the exact cutoff date now, but if you have like, I'm gonna get this wrong now, I think a 4103 is your typical group four billiard with a tapered bit. I think is a 4103, I'd, I'd have to like look that up again. Um, but the numbers, usually the first number is the group size, and then the number one, I think, is billiard, and the 03 might be tapered. I can't remember exactly, but uh, it really depends on when it was made. There are great resources online that you can check, and it'll show you all the nomenclature. It'll show you the dating system as well. Um, it has to do with numbers. If I had a Dunhill in front of me, I could show you, but they're all in my place. Um, but I've gone into that that a little bit in the last video where I got the Dunhill root briar. Check that out. I talk about the numbering system a little bit and the dating. Um, and then just look up, you know, dating a Dunhill or look up Dunhill pipe nomenclature. And there's a really cool website that I can't think of offhand that shows all that information. They even have kind of a little flow chart where you can see, okay, if my pipe has this, go here. If it has this, go here. And it'll show you exactly when it was made. Um, it's been extensively researched and all that information is online. But thanks for the question. And now we've been going a long time. A lot, of, a lot of energy going on here. Some of it negative, some of it positive, some of it very positive. But now it is time for some very, very positive energy when we close out the show by thanking our supporters on Patreon. Those who support the channel at $25 and up a month on Patreon, the heroes out there. And first of all, we would like to thank our good friend, Glenn! Thank you so much, Glenn, especially in these trying times for supporting us on Patreon. Also, Kevin Moore. Thanks so much, Kevin. You sent some, you sent a giant box full of goodness the other day, and we very much appreciate that, just as we appreciate you supporting us on Patreon. Also, Derek. Thanks, Derek. Cody Strigla. Thank you very much, Cody. Nathaniel Hills is also a $25 supporter on Patreon. Kirk Crompton. Private Investigator is a $25 supporter. C.W. Piperman, thank you so much, C.W. Garrett, thank you, Garrett. Adam Loveless, thank you very, very much, Adam Loveless. Also, Ryan McFadden is our newest $25 supporter on Patreon. Thank you, Ryan. And now for the maniac tier, the crazy people who support the channel at $100 a month. People like Peter Straub. Peter, thank you so much. You are one of the good ones. Uh, and let me know if you finished that tin of Elizabethan. I know that you said initially you were liking it a lot, but now what do you think after going through the whole thing? Let me know. And then Bob McGee. Thanks, Bob. We appreciate you very, very much. But gang, that's it. We're right about 30 minutes, probably more. I don't know. But uh, we're going to see. We're going to see what happens with this experimentation. Um, hopefully it gets, it's amusing and not annoying when I start doing odd things on the channel to see if I can subvert the YouTube monetization algorithms. Uh, but we'll see what happens and I will keep you posted. I'll keep you posted about those t-shirts. Remember to watch the video on Wednesday about this beautiful pipe. Also, uh, Titanfall 2 Sekiro series are continuing on SATP. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend Bradley. You've been the audience of the place. Ah, I'll see you later.